Stan! Stan! How do you tame a horse in Minecraft? What? South Park is a franchise that proudly stands on its own two feet, and whether it's watched through the base show or a special on Paramount+, Plus, it's going to make for an entertaining experience. The video games take this one step further, where many throw the audience into the world of South Park Colorado in its entirety to be explored. I lied when I covered this content in a previous video though. There were a ton of hidden games I did not cover, so only the console releases were discussed at the time, along with the most recent mobile game. In this video, I'll be going over the games that time forgot. The entries that are hard to find, and that were even harder to get my hands on. With that in mind, I was not able to play all of these games. Extensive research was done, but nonetheless, all the information from this video should be used to form one's own opinion. Now that that's out of the way, grab some cheesy poofs, and let's begin with the mobile games. South Park Sports Day is the worst mobile game on this list. I'm gonna put it at the C tier because while it doesn't flatter me much at all, it's a mobile release from 2005, so it would be unfair to expect much. It consists of four minigames slightly related to athletics, and my least favorite is the Hurdles minigame, which includes Canadian icon Terrence from Terrence and Philip, the popular show within the world of the series. All he does is run in a straight line and fart over hurdles in this one. It's kind of dumb. I would put this sledding minigame next on the podium for third place. It's very basic as well, but I appreciate that the four boys are represented. Above that, I would put this Cartman Pancake minigame in second place for being somewhat engaging. And at number one here, I would put this Dancing Cartman game. It's still stupid and sure as hell isn't pushing any boundaries, but it is funny. THQ Wireless had pumped out a ton of games back in the early 2000s, but I don't see Sports Day as one of their strongest. But you know what? Even though it's here as the worst mobile game on this list, it still used the IP in an interesting way. Now we're at the B tier with South Park Mecha Fighter. It's another work of art by THQ Wireless, and with the way it did things, it stands out among the crowd here. Across the different modes to choose from, the four main boys are represented in unique monster forms. In the versus mode, the player fights off against one of the other characters as giants among South Park, and cars can be picked up and buildings can be destroyed. While taking damage, the character images will flinch, which I think is a nice touch. But what shows this game's age is the audio experience. There's no background music and only one echoey sound effect plays. It feels awkward, unfortunately, but there's also a destroy mode, where the focus is on damaging the town as much as possible for the highest score until time runs out. And finally, there's an arcade mode that pits the player against every character in the game. Special characters in the mode include Mr. Hanky, Chef, Timmy, and Butters. Defeating these characters unlocks them permanently for the player to use. South Park Imagination Land released in 2008, and it's a puzzle platforming game with a bouncy Butters stotch similar to the likes of a pinball in a pinball machine. It had a total of 60 levels divided up into three different arenas, and the gameplay consists of collecting rainbows, which is very similar to another game I played that was released in the same era, Rubirth's Kick and Fly, this farting Santa game where he bounces around collecting snowflakes. The background includes a lot of characters from the actual Imagination Land episodes from South Park, which are episodes that many consider a classic arc of the show. Some may even consider it peak South Park. For context, Imagination Land is a place where magical beings live, and it was a three-part arc that was a highlight of the show's 11th season, which aired in 2007. This was an excellent subject to use as the basis of a game, but with this very simple game format, it never got far. It's decent, but there are more platformers on this list that I'd just consider better. South Park 10 The Game is one of those platformers. Kicking off the A tier, it's divided into sections that go along with the first 10 seasons of South Park, 
So the first season's levels, for example, have the player play as Scuttlebutt and scare people away. It's a very short game, with each world only containing three base levels and four bonus levels that can be completed after collecting all the cheesy poofs of that world. It's pretty outdated here, it was released back in 2007 after all, and also while playing, no background music is typical, but occasional sound effects will be heard. Along with this, there's some weirdness, like Cartman doesn't show up until the bonus level of Season 7, yet Starvin' Marvin and Lemmy Winks the Gerbil are playable well before. Season 8's bonus level has you play as a Ninja Kenny to fight off Professor Chaos, Butters' his alter ego. In the last two sections of the game, Cartman is finally the playable character, but at least from what I've seen, he never appears in his iconic outfit. For completing every level, a Mr. Hanky speedrun mode unlocks for the whole game, which gives it some genuine replay value. So that's all for South Park 10 the game. This next entry is nostalgic for many and was a nice surprise when I first discovered it. South Park Mega Millionaire was released in 2009 with a new theme that spiced things up, and for only a dollar, this game had more than enough content to make its price tag worth it. Here the boys were contestants of a Japanese game show where they would wear roller skates and carefully get to the end of obstacle-like courses. There's a multiplayer mode and quick play mode, but the story mode is what seemed to be the heart of the game. The game was divided into levels like the previous two entries in this ranking, but an achievement system was present in this game that gave a new incentive to play, and these levels would involve unique objectives, such as this one that required a bonsai tree to be kept safe. At least in the version I checked out, there were no sound effects, only the background music played. Also, I found something of interest when navigating the world map. There was the chance of landing on a Wheel of Misfortune space. This was a system that had a great chance of granting the player a negative effect. With the Japanese game show aesthetic encompassing sumo wrestlers and cherry blossoms, it made for a game that stood out. So those were the mobile entries. Some are weird, some are random as hell, but some are also pretty interesting. Now it's time to talk about the computer games, these rinky-dink pieces of media that could either be described as hidden gems that kicked ass, or straight-up trash that isn't worth playing. We're going to be addressing the trash at the F tier, and work our way up. Big Heapum Slots is without a doubt the worst game in this entire video. It has a very concise premise of you playing this slot machine and... That's it, you just sit here and spin the slot machine. I have nothing to say, it barely connects to South Park, if at all, and I'm not sure how it's going to sound here, but the sound effects are just horrendous. Speaking of horrendous, here's Heroin Hero, an actual South Park Flash game where your character takes heroin and chases this pink dragon. The problem is that it's impossible to catch the pink dragon, so everything seen here is all there is to it. This is a tad bit better than the slot machine game, though, just because this exists as a reference to a game Stan was playing in the show in Season 11. Other than that, I'm not sure why anyone would want to touch this game with a 10-foot pole. If the last two games weren't bad enough, Wild Animal Thumb Jam is actually the dumbest game I've ever seen in my life. The game kicks off with a cutscene of Cartman acting like a wildlife professional, and included with it are instructions telling the player to, quote, use your mouse to find the animals and click the button to jam your thumb up their holes. That's weird as hell and stupid as hell. Like, why? So this is the gameplay. Cartman sticks his thumb out and finds animals who get up in his face. It's stupid playing it, and even worse in concept. Let's see what we have next. Nice. Kick the Baby is a game commonly played between Kyle and his little brother Ike, and here it is as a poor Flash game. It involves kicking Ike in three different locations, and that that's it. It could be played again for the sake of reaching a higher score, I suppose, but why bother? It's a blatant promotion for the South Park movie. This game is like playing an advertisement. 
Something's Wrong in South Park is the face of the D tier, a straightforward game that basically freezes the intro of the show eight different times and asks the player to pick two things that are wrong with the scene. If a choice is correct or incorrect, commentary will be heard from different characters of the show. You got it. Oh, cool. And that's all the input I can give. Not much is going on here. And this isn't going to be much better. This is Hippie Drill, where the player runs through hippies and other things in the way of a concert stage. At least in the gameplay I was able to find, it's visually nothing special and the frame rate was not doing well. This concept might seem pretty random, and it is, but it's a reference to Season 9, Episode 2, Die Hippie Die. Cheesy Poofs is a shockwave game that released in 1998, and in short, it's simple and unflattering. I discovered two versions of the title, so I'm going to start off with this one. I can't play any of the audio because its background music consists of a snippet of the show's intro song over and over again, which gets old quickly. But the game begins with Cartman's mom saying, Would you boys like some cheesy poops? And Cartman responds with, You get your bitch ass back in the kitchen! A very Cartman thing to say. Then eating sounds are heard throughout while Cartman spits out some lines, mainly him saying, Give me that cake! since cakes are occasionally thrown at him among the many orange cheesy poofs. This game is underwhelming, and looking at the other version, which is a Windows executable, it's not an improvement. Here, Cartman still says, You get your bitch ass back in the kitchen! But now it's just said throughout the gameplay. There's different background music now, and it's quite noticeable that the texture for the cheesy poofs is different. In this version, there's also no dialogue heard at the start of the game. Only the background music begins to play, and at the end, the game kind of just cuts out instead of Cartman coming closer to the screen to shake in place and yell at us. Regardless of the version, the game is uninspired and bland, a full 180 from the great South Park games that we've received later. South Park Sliders is a straightforward puzzle game that has the player trying their best to put together an image. This footage of the game was all I was able to find, but I doubt it gets any more intriguing than this. There's nothing wrong here technically, but we have bigger and better titles here to check out. Now at the C tier, Cartman vs. Evil Cartman is an entry that references Spooky Fish, the 15th episode from Season 2. In it, there are goateed versions of the boys that come from an alternate universe where everyone is evil. Although, ironically, the evil version of Cartman is a nice kid. I had to stay home today because my mother wasn't feeling well. She has the flu, and I wanted to take care of the house so she could stay in bed. In this game, the two versions of Cartman face off, similar to the actual episode, where they tussle on stage to fight for who gets sent to the evil universe. While playing is awkwardly quiet, except for the sounds of them hitting one another, and the occasional lines of dialogue from the two of them. The goal of the game is to push the evil Cartman back into the portal and send him off the stage. Doing this will win the round, and the game seems to keep going until failure. There's also the occasional animal that comes in to spice up the gameplay, and I also like when the boys come out of the curtain to signify different things. And that's that. When you see a game called Brown Noise Poo Blast, chances are it's gonna draw your attention, and that's exactly what this game did to me. It's actually a musical game involving the four boys with a poop theme to it, which makes sense when considering the source material. It's based on Season 3, Episode 17, where people play the recorder and everyone in the world craps their pants. The goal is to click the musical notes in rhythm at the correct time and get the set amount of points before the level ends. When playing, it's even possible to get a crap combo. <laughs> So in my previous video, I talked about a game called Chef's Love Shack, and for those who don't know, it's a trivia game that involves Mario Party-like minigames. At the time, I harshly considered it the worst South Park game, just because it was random and no computers would play alongside the player when playing without friends. Now I've discovered Chef's Love Shack Trivia Challenge, which is technically worse. This version doesn't even have minigames, so it's pure trivia. But in the context of this video, I know there's far worse out there than Chef's Love Shack, which is why I put it here in the seats here.
Butters' very own episode was a highlight of Season 5, with Butters having his own title card, theme song, and a great focus on him and his family. It was really good, and it just so happens that a game was made off of this as well. It consists of various minigame versions of scenes from the episode, with the first one having Butters follow his dad around and take pictures of him. There's another minigame where, well, you can read the instructions for that one. Alien Chase has an interesting premise. In the instructions, it's told that alien cops are chasing Chef and the boys, so Chef has to drive them all to safety. But this is reversed in the actual gameplay. The player controls the car with Chef and the boys in it, while they evade other cars and obstacles dropped by the alien cops. Surviving until the end of the level is the goal of the game, and shooting down the alien car grants extra points. Candy Drop is very simple. It involves this big, red-haired man throwing candy down at Cartman, and he has to pick it all up. The rounds are signified by the little character heads in the bottom right, which I think is neat. And as the rounds progress, it gets ridiculously faster and faster, and while playing, there's this jungle-type beat that makes me think of Donkey Kong. Just listen to this. We've arrived at the South Park Timmy game, this narrative masterpiece that begins its story with a heartbreaking cutscene. Timmy's pet turkey has been kidnapped, and he needs to get him back. This journey consists of Timmy traveling through four different levels, with the first three basically being him navigating through obstacles in different ways. In the final level, Timmy needs to crowd surf his way to a stage to get his turkey. Once he makes it, his mission is accomplished and the game is over. The game is already not bad, but I especially appreciate the cutscenes here for elevating the experience. In Major Boobage K-Type, Kenny flies around driving a car in space while he shoots enemies heading in his direction. It kicks off with a little cinematic of Kenny in his flying car, and the game begins. There are power-ups to pick up, and at one point there's even this sun-shaped monster that has to be fought. And honestly, I'm just going to keep it at that, because if I continue to show gameplay of this, I risk getting demonetized. Now we're at the B tier with Rainforest Rescue, and I really don't have much to say about this piece of old South Park media. It's all here, and the gameplay speaks for itself. It's a simple game, similar to the likes of Frogger, where the player uses a Cartman-controlled bulldozer to pick up kids and bring them back down to safety. If it all seems random, it's a reference to the first episode of Season 3, titled Rainforest Schmainforest, where the class gets captured by tribal creatures and is then saved by a group of bulldozers. South Park Dodgeball is a computer game that was released in 1999 as a Flash game that takes great inspiration from Episode 5 of Season 2, which is titled Conjoined Fetus Lady. The B plot of the episode includes the boys going to China to compete in a dodgeball championship, which is what South Park Dodgeball is, essentially the same story but in a video game format. Are you guys seeing the trend here? They really like to make Flash games based on random episodes. Anyways, it's possible to choose the kids that end up in the match, and just like the Chinese characters in the show, they are portrayed offensively here as well. This isn't much of a surprise with it being South Park, and this is 90s South Park at that. Along with this being classic South Park, Chef is a relevant part of the game, who acts both as a coach and even a cheerleader between rounds. Here we go, cows, here we go, uh, uh, here we go, cows, here we go, uh, uh. Like some of the other Flash games of the time, this is also quieter by default, with a lack of background music and only sound effects to be heard. Per round, the boys are given four hits, and after being hit a fourth time, will be out for the rest of the round. When all boys go down for good, that's when the game ends. And the point of playing is simply to get a high score. So here we have Cripple Fight. It's a game that clearly involves some lowbrow humor, but you know what? It's actually a pretty layered experience. Even this one is inspired by an episode. Episode 2 of the show's fifth season, to be specific. It shares the same title, and it gives the context on why they're in Boy Scouts attire in front of a grocery store. 
The game begins with the cutscene of Timmy and Jimmy speaking with one another, and it then gives the option to play as either one of the two kids. After winning three rounds as Jimmy, a bonus level will ensue where he dodges hazards while wearing a parka that's awfully similar to Kenny's. If the player decides to play as Jimmy and wins three rounds in a row with that character, the same bonus level will ensue but from his perspective where he tries everything he can to stop Jimmy by placing down the same hazards seen previously. South Park has a good track record of notable fighting games, so this one certainly adds to it. South Park Pinball was released in 2000 and is what you would expect. It's a simple pinball game involving all the major characters at the time. When Stan gets hit, he barfs, and when Cartman gets hit, he farts out fire. Most consistently, there are the Terrence and Phillip bumpers that get hit, and every time they do, they fart and laugh. <laughs> Nothing is bad here, but I do think it's relevant to note that more advanced South Park pinball games have released since. The first A-tier entry is titled Volcano, and as one can imagine, it's an entry that involves a volcano, or more specifically, streams of lava. This is a puzzle game where a path needs to be made for lava to flow safely. Occasionally, some of the show's characters will be thrown into the path, and they'll have to be worked around. In each level, players have a time limit where they have to complete the path before time is up, or they'll fail. Or, if they're confident enough, they could release the lava prematurely. Moving on, Snake Blast is exactly like the classic Centipede game. This involves Stan shooting out bottle rockets while the mayor and her people are getting in the way. The goal is to survive as long as possible and continue progressing through the levels. And the levels don't necessarily get harder, the only difference is the new formations of the bodyguards on the lawn. This is a good, clean game, it ran well for me, and there's nothing really wrong here. Lemmy Winks the Gerbil is a classic character who's been around since the sixth season of the show. And among his different appearances, he also got his own game. It kicks off with a message from his frog friend, basically saying that he needs to get out of this guy's butt. And as time goes on, there are even levels with poop involved that has to be avoided. The gameplay is pretty good with Lemmy Winks being controlled by the player's computer mouse and needing to carefully shimmy through the tight spaces without hitting the walls or other obstacles. The cherry on top of this experience is the magical music that plays during the gameplay. It makes me feel like it was my destiny to help this gerbil weasel his way out of this rectum. South Park Trapper Keeper is the Kyle platforming game I didn't know I needed in my life. As the story goes, Cartman has merged with his Trapper Keeper and has turned into a blob, which is also what happened in Season 4 Episode 12 of the show. The first level has Kyle climbing a mountain, and I can already tell that it'll be a smoother experience than usual. We have an actual mini-map and a gauge on the left sharing the elevation we're at. Level 2 has Kyle swimming through what basically looks like an anus. There are fart clouds in there after all. There seems to be a theme here. Level 3 is some more simple platforming inside the beast, and once again the UI is helpful here with what Kyle's trying to accomplish. Level 4 is more of the same with a more orange mechanical theme, and the final level is titled Jew vs. Fat Ass, The Final Showdown, where Kyle gets to the heart of the Cartman Trapper Keeper beast and needs to escape. I would say the most disappointing thing of all is beating the game, it doesn't show a cutscene or an interaction between Cartman and Kyle. Instead, we're given a very simple screen. Dying in this game is very similar. It just prompts a still image and gives the player the option to play again. With all that being said, it's an above average South Park experience that commemorates an interesting story from the early days of the series. Before South Park's very popular COVID-19 pandemic special, there was another two-part pandemic special in the show that involved Peruvian flute bands and guinea pigs. Oh, that startled me! That was really startling! So here it is as a flash game. There's even a beginning cutscene that sets the scene excellently. It's a platformer where Craig is the star, and every level has a guinea pig at the end with a friend to save. 
Involved with this, a unique aspect I liked was that the friends will occasionally say stuff to you. Nothing ever said from the friends is helpful, but the companionship is nice. South Park Big Wheel Death Rally defines what an S-tier game should be. It's one with a lot of content that blows away the competition with 16 characters to choose from with their various stats. There are a few power-ups present similar to other kart racers in the genre. There are hippies and chocolate salty balls to interact with during races as well. And can I just say how cursed the children look in this picture? It's a little disturbing, not gonna lie. There is a little bit of jank to the character designs. I believe their heads look too big compared to the rest of their bodies. Well-known characters stand around the track that add to the world's atmosphere, and with everything here, I would consider this a formidable kart racer. In South Park Double Bunny, Randy fights people with bunny ears on. It's the one and only arcade brawler. It's very South Park, with a special ability involving Jesus coming in to help by eliminating everyone on screen. It's divided into different stages, and there's even a giant spider at one point. Peter Nelson is a playable character who is Randy Marsh's best friend and at one point co-worker. I honestly had to look him up because I didn't know him before this. Was that just me? I don't know. Anyways, the game's journey was worth it because a bunny was saved at the end. South Park Ass Kicker is another big one. It's another South Park contribution to the fighting game genre, but this time it's clearly inspired by Mortal Kombat, and they went with that fully. I mean, there are even fatality-like moves that can be done on opponents after winning a match. Finish. Stan wins putrid death. It is janky, but I wouldn't consider it a major deal. Like, that's its way of showing its age, but the content that's here still really holds up. All the fighters present have movesets that, for the most part, go along with their character well and emphasize their behavior in the show. A decent variety of stages to fight on are present as well, and last but not least, Mr. Garrison is represented here as Mrs. Garrison. You go to hell and you die! 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 You go also at the S tier is South Park Prelude to Tokugawa, a 2D fighting game based on the Season 8 episode titled Good Times with Weapons. There is a story mode to this, with the final boss being Professor Chaos. When dying, a 10 second countdown will pop up and appear on the South Park sign, so that's a nice touch. But if it wasn't noticed already, the best thing about this is the character designs. Cartman looks insane! And an intro plays revealing Butters as the main villain of this little story. And it's cool, showing off some gameplay and character designs. Also, shirtless Cartman is hilarious. I've never seen that until now. We've seen a very random assortment of games so far, and I thought it would make sense to add to the randomness by addressing some fan-made games, since some of these still live on in the memories of South Park fans to this day. The first is this. South Park Kill Kenny is a poorly made piece that has the player control Kenny who dodges knives that are dropped on him by the other boys. With this being a Flash game, I know they tend to be simple and short, but this is just poor quality, and canonically makes no sense. As those who watch the series know, Kenny has regularly gotten killed in dramatic ways throughout the episodes, which then leads to his friends saying the classic line, Oh my god! They killed Kenny! You bastard! With this in mind, why would his friends be the one trying to kill him? It's strange. I'm just not impressed at all. It's visually unappealing. The sound of the knives hitting the ground gets annoying real fast. And even Kenny's voice lines don't make sense, with them not being muffled as they should be. I'm all for South Park video games, but this one is subpar. 
Ray is kind of a mini fan-made franchise and is about a little violent dude. It looks like South Park, but certainly does not take place in its world. And Ray and the other important characters are adults, even though they look like South Park children. This was not something I played in the past, but I just thought it was worth a mention. Cartman's Authority is a fan-made platforming game made by one person. It has a level format that involves Cartman beating people up, burning others with a flamethrower, shooting people with an RPG, and outright shooting children, which I would say has an age the best. And he can electrocute people like Emperor Palpatine, obviously. There's no music, just sound effects, and there's some cheesy poofs to collect. Within levels, there would be bonus levels that have a night sky that would act as a safe space to collect a bunch of cheesy poofs. There's a great variety of enemy types, although some are just innocent characters walking around, but my favorites are Mr. Hanky and Bouncing Mr. Hat. And with this being South Park, there's a ton of fart noises, typically heard when enemies die. There's even a little boss fight here against Shelly on level 5. And the final boss is Mr. Garrison, who has an army of rats and just tells Cartman over and over again to go to hell. You go to hell! You go to hell, you die! One more entry I have here that's a little out there is Cartman's Escape Room Experience. This is an official experience involved with South Park Studios, and it's the most recent bit of South Park entertainment I researched for this video. It's very interesting. Basically, there was a real-life escape room set up, and virtually people were able to enjoy it and go through it. I guess I would call this more of an interactive experience than a game, but I just thought it was worth a mention. Even after all the content we went through, there are still some games out there that I just couldn't access. But for some, I did have descriptions. The first of these is South Park Save Kenny by THQ Wireless, a collection of minigames that was released back in 2005 on mobile. The goal was to keep Kenny alive with food, water, and sleep, which were achieved through playing the different minigames. And as shown on screen, it seemed like a map of Kenny's portion of South Park was used to access the different minigames. One of them involved the four-assed monkeys, another had Kenny running around a graveyard with death chasing him, and some of them seemed to be on the more random side of things, but in one way or another, all were related to saving Kenny. A major problem, however, was the Tomagotchi-like aspect of the game. If a player was to stop opening up the game constantly, Kenny would die and the game would have to be restarted. Like, it was common to find Kenny dead after going to bed in real life and getting a full night's rest. So this feature did not benefit the game at all. With that being said, this mobile game is still a part of South Park's extensive history, so I thought it was worth a mention. Another mysterious mobile game existed simply titled South Park. Made by Infusio, it released in Europe in 2003, and just based on the home screen, I'm already liking the game visually. This game allows you to play as one of several South Park characters in 13 different minigames, and here I have footage for some. This is Kenny Cow Dodge, where Kenny has to avoid the hostile cows that want to kill him. The cows come in from the right side of the screen, and he'll have to move up and down to shimmy through them. It's very easy to win, with Kenny having 15 hits until he ultimately dies, and reaching the end in under 4 minutes is how this is won. The next one is titled Pea Pool, where Cartman swims around collecting floaties while he avoids the pea. Then some minigames have images, and the rest only have descriptions. With everything that Infusio's South Park had to offer, it seems like it was a celebration of all the aspects of South Park under one video game installment, and I respect that. On screen, I'm putting up the titles of Flash games that I'm pretty sure existed that I just couldn't find any information for. If any of you watching find these games, let us know in the comments. And with that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.